attention, please. So, um, my name is Peter, I'm from Sofia. Uh, I'm the chair of this panel, emergency left me of uh, chair of this panel. Um, I will be also speaking on Sunday. Uh, we have two speakers uh, in this panel. The first one is Fadiana Cioni. Uh, she graduated architecture from the University of Florence in 1997. Uh, from 1994 till the year 2000, she lived in Milano and was part of uh, different uh, libertarian anarchist groups and also uh, the Libertarian Publishing House. I don't know if I pronounced it correct. Uh, now she's a PhD student in Venice. Uh, the second uh, speaker in this panel is Leo Jubal from Paris. Uh, he's master in international development and uh, balance and conflicts. Uh, he works uh, for the French Association, which is supporting directly refugees. Uh, we're a bit late uh, with the schedule, uh, so we will try to catch up a bit. Uh, every speaker, as you know, has like a maximum of 15 minutes uh, for the presentation. After that, we'll go in an open discussion. Uh, that's basically it. Thanks. Okay. Um, so I yep. start and I try. Okay. Um, so, thank you very much for being here and for the space to um, share the experience in uh, Java, as uh, uh, or better, as they implemented the co democratic confederalism in northern Syria. And uh, Jiwar, the place of a woman, is uh, near the place that uh, it is now bombing. Turkish is bombing. And as you know very well, in 240, people of northern Syria, they chose for or endorsed um, the social contract of the Democratic Confederation. And uh, uh, the place, the region, people in the region are different in meaning of uh, culture and religion. So uh, in, the demo, in the preamble, uh, the um, social contract states that the consensual democratic federal system guarantees the participation of all individuals and groups. It takes ethnic and religious differences into consideration according to the characteristic of each group based <coughs> on the principle of a mutual coexistence and people fraternity. And uh, in the second article, it states that the democratic federal system of northern Syria adopts the ecological and democratic system of women's and free freedom, sorry. So therefore, the choice of, of the population uh, was for a peaceful, stateless solution that is based on the fundamental right of everyone to maintain their own culture, mother tongue, and religion. Its roots are in the idea that Abdullah Jalan has developed in prison since the beginning of 200. The thought of Ojalan is that the, a confederation of political self-administration where all groups of the society and uh, cultural identities can express themselves in local meetings, general convention and council will lead to the dissolution of the nation states through the Middle East. The dissolution of uh, uh, the nation states is a fundamental topic for Kurdish movement and I think even for us, because we have to change our mentality as uh, each uh, uh, kind of uh, uh, nation state. In the north of Syria, a process of democratization of a civil society had begun. A society is democratic only with the active participation of women who organize themselves in all sectors. The strong drive to women to get rid themselves of the emotional, physical, and psychological bonds to the male has created the current and stream that is still awareness in women, releasing creative energy <coughs> capable of solving problems and carry out projects. So, one of the purposes of a women's movement, Kurdish obviously, was to found a place that was a women's workshop of citizenship and self-government, an ecological village made by women for women. The project of a women's village, Jinwar, has been supported by all members of autonomous federation self-government. All cantons have 
shared and support it. But the association directly involved in the construction committee are those that fall under the large umbrella of Congress Star, and they are the House of Women, Malaji, the Congress of Free Women, the Committee of Genealogy, the Cooperative of, of Fighting Families, the Committee for Women's Diplomacy. So, uh, why woman village? Well, the woman was the first colony, the first to be reduced to slavery, to lose her social role, to be enslaved, to the male. But with the woman, also nature became an object, therefore raped and exploited to exhaustion. Ojalan says something very important uh, for the movement, uh, for an ecological <coughs> movement, uh, because woman's success is the success of society at the individual at all levels. This is more important than class or national liberation. The era of a democratic civilization shall be one when woman rises and succeed fully. This is not a slogan, but uh, full of meaning. And uh, the change <coughs> in Rojava was really um, through this kind of society. And uh, why village? For example, Ojalan say, today I have no doubt that the ideal life, uh, humanity can only be sustained in the villages that are in harmony with ecology, not in the city structures of modernity. <coughs> the only way that the cities can become fit for human duality is to transform them into ecological villages. And uh, uh, jump. And so the eco villages deep web. Um, the liberation of women is fundamental for a democratic and ecological so society. About me, uh, with ecological village, women gave birth to the revolution. Jumal is the place of a free women, free to be to live in communalism without a hierarchies, egotism, competition, structure of power but promoting solidarity, mutualism, sisterhood, sisterhood, but in a very deep meaning, sisterhood, they, in Kurmanji, they say, have a tea, that is uh, really very strong in share, and feeling, and emotion, and so on. A self-built village in which to regain human relationships and overcome the cancer of cities with the will to put into practice a female alternative aware of an ecological, social role of the human being. It's our characteristic. As you can see, the shape of the, of the village is a, a, a sort of a triangle. Uh, you can see some pub, uh, public or communal space, uh, like uh, the school, the academy, the a, a center called it space, because the shape is important. It was decided that the residential nucleus of the houses would be articulated in such a way as to form a triangle with, at the center, a collective space connected by a central plan. Those elementary geometries uh, have a strong symbolic value. The triangle, which records the woman's pelvic one, has been suffered since the anterior Paleolithic. As Maria Gimbuta, well, sorry, Maria Gimbuta pointed out, from the artifacts, it will seem clear that the woman's ability to give life and nurse children through her body was considered sacred and venerated. So the web of multidimensional relationships that the self-building of the village weaves since the beginning of its uh, conception is enriched with all the thickness of the chosen building material. <coughs> Sorry. A, a material always, always used in Mesopotamia, a thousand years old technology. It means mud brick and straw and hard plaster. It's a site-specific material developed according to the context uh, with the best performance in terms of environmental comfort in dry summer or very cold winter. The building materials are available on the territory, so circumventing the heavy embargo to which the region was subjected. Using raw land, the community creates a web connection among a lot of different uh, social and natural elements, such as cultural, environmental, social, ecological, because mud brick involves the use of 
obviously, local natural resources, but even the preservation of the ecosystem and uh, the energy and the economic saving. It also recovers cultural tradition and strengthens the local identity. In the field of democratization, it encourages uh, the active participation of women uh, and uh, the cooperation and inclusion. It develops autonomy and even creativity and self-production. All these factors do not interact in, an, in a linear way, but create synergies with the social and the ecological cascade effects, moving the values of the community towards a free nature. So activating a relationship from within with the natural world. According to the interpretation made by Bookchin, third nature is uh, an ethical, humanly scaled community that establishes a creative interaction with its natural environment. <coughs> About uh, Ojalan, he said um, the same concept, uh, the synthesis of a society is uh, internally balanced and harmonious material and ideological culture with that of nature will result in free nature, or as Bookchin said, in ecology of freedom, third nature. About me, Ginovar is, is part of the river of a democratic society. The river that starts during uh, the Paleolithic uh, with goddess, for example. In Ginovar, the democratic modernity took form. Or took it form. Ginovar collectives draws its ethical principles from the natural world. It's a community that welcomes, support, and helps. It's anti-authoritarian, spontaneous, creative, and very important is this top united, united in diversity. It's very important, and they are really uh, different people that are were, sorry, in Genoa. To take care is a connotation of a feminine nature. In Genoa, women take care of people as well as the environment. They have been planting fruit trees since the construction seat began. The trees as a sign of the wheel to take root in their place and to grow <coughs> free. The fruit to become autonomous and enjoy the fragrance of colors because even aesthetic is very important, creative and this kind. Self-sufficiency for inhabitants' food needs is one of the aim of the village. The principle of communal life is a, a foundation. There are Arab, Kurdish, Yazidi, internationalist women who live together in the community. Some of them work outside, and their, their remuneration is shared, and it becomes part of the community's economy. However, the goal is to, to drive the market out of the society, because market is not economy, and capitalism is not economy, but a structure of power. But, um, the experience of the women's village is a pioneer in the process of a democratization of society, which cannot be separated from the care of a continuing training. In Genoa, the Women's Academy, it's the only two-story building, is the center of active and alternative training, led by women with women. The Genoa, uh, sorry, uh, Genoa uh, Women's Academy is set to become the reference point uh, for genealogy through the region. So what is genealogy? Genealogy, I spent some uh, words for this, was started uh, just in 2012 uh, uh, um, by the Kurdish sorry, uh, movement, movement. And uh, in Rojava, it was uh, um, an official part of the education system, uh, even uh, in the university. Genealogy is uh, a new science that criticizes the connection of hegemony, oppression, uh, and science with each other. It criticizes the hegemony of man on history. History is the base of our understanding of the present, but we have to repeat our history as women and even as people. Genealogy therefore wants to reinterpret what? Mythology, religion, philosophy, and science, because those are the main um, topic of uh, this, uh, their the, uh, the history of man history. Through women's liberation, it aims uh, at the liberation of a whole society and the establishment of a free and communal life.
and uh, genealogy, but genealogy is also considered as self-defense because self-defense is not only make weapons but also uh, became strong uh, in our uh, history, for example. Another uh, important uh, element is uh, the fact that uh, the Women's Academy is the center of a community in the meaning that uh, uh, they make inside the assemblies and uh, they have a lot of assemblies uh, uh, to manage uh, their daily life in the village. One of the most particular uh, assemblies is Tekmil. Tekmil uh, is a fundamental instrument uh, of revolutionary practice in which each participant criticizes and self-criticizes. It's very important. The technique creates an environment of trust in which the participants can open up to the compañeras with their frailty. In this kind of meetings, each one learns to exceed one's own limits. For example, they take turns to make the experience of leading the assembly, but not only, obviously. They develop awareness of their own abilities, respect for diversity, and cultivate a deep sense of sharing. It's a way to deepen the bond of a sisterhood and trust in the group or build healthy the relation. Uh, the technique always hand with the proposal for overcoming problems or, or for activities to do. I can jump because this is about uh, how, how, how it's important, uh, but I want to finish, uh, because I think I have finished uh, time, so I want to finish just uh, uh, with a letter that uh, a woman from Genoa they wrote and sent to us, dear friends of Genoa, thank you for your solidarity and support. We really feel all your voices, and this has a big meaning for all of us. Situation in our country is really heavy. Turkish state is not stopping attack us. Using the dirtiest methods of annihilation has not been and phosphorus forbidden chemical weapons. They are using all its power to attack our areas. These attacks are leading to Syrian massacres. Our defense force bravely continue to inflict heavy blows against the occupation forces. As women from Genoa, we have been forced to leave our place because of this dangerous situation. Turkish state are throwing bombs on our region and sky over Genoa is daily crossed by military plants and drones. And now I jump and just uh, the conclusion, situation of all, all women, mothers uh, and children of our, our village is difficult. We had to leave our houses, our children are afraid, and we don't know what will be the next. Anyhow, we haven't suffered personal damage, and we are all safe till now. But winter is coming, and the situation is getting harder and harder. In this deafness, we need any support and help as people from Rojavadu. We need all the people who share our web values and principles to stand up and support democratic autonomous administration in northern and eastern Syria and take action against the Turkish occupation. Our mood and motivation stay high. We continue to live our lives that follow our values day by day and any circumstances. We stay together and believe in our people and society which sticks to own principles. Only unity and common struggle can bring us to victory. Jin, Jian, Azadim. And after, if you want, uh, you have uh, just, uh, um, if you want to donate something, you can. And I finish, so thank you very much. <laughs> this is just the map uh, now, where is bombing and to understand where is uh, Jim Ward, sorry. <laughs> Can you provide this presentation online? Yes, yes. Thank you. Uh, with your help, uh, with your help, <laughs> okay. I can, uh, Jim Ward is the red uh, dot, <laughs> and uh, <coughs> Serekani, Derbazier is not now under 
bombing. Serikani now is uh, totally destroyed. As you know, a lot of people was killed in the city. And Thank you very much. Yes. All map? Yes, please. Uh, no, Just the whole map. No, I the, have only the, the bombing. The, the bombing. Yeah, this, this one. Okay. Yeah, it would be fine. Okay. Ah, okay. okay. Hi, everyone. Um, okay. I'm very stressed, so I might. I try to be as much uh, comprehensive as I, as I can be. Um, so contrary to some people here, like Tania, for instance, or, or Fabiana, I don't have primary experience of Chiapas and Rojava. So basically, what I'm talking about is an anal um, analysis from other people's works and other people's testimonies from meetings and discussions. Um, so I'll try to create links between um, what I say and what Fabiana says and what other people have said today. Um, so the ti title of my article was uh, Destitution and Autonomy in Chiapas and Rojava. Um, destitution is a um, quite new word and new concept in political la landscape, uh, European political landscape nowadays, though its inheritance is uh, very old. Uh, it started in the 2000s, I think, to to become a real political concept. Uh, destitution and autonomy cr create a double movement of both dismissal and construction. So basically, creation and destruction, but the word dismissal is more important and we'll see why. So first, I'd like to start with um, a small parenthesis. History, as we know it, was written by the victors. Um, according to Walter Benjamin, the cultural heritage um, is an, both an illustration of culture as artistic culture, creation of genuses and stuff, as well as barbarism because of the oppression of, um, of some people by other people. In the Western model and modern society, history is trapped within the dogma of progress, a progress that is considered human, endless, and unstoppable. And this is true for both right-wing liberals and social democrats. Um, so optimism towards the, fut the future hope, in a way, is the work of the dominant. It's not our work, and this is the destitution stance. On the contrary, destitution seeks to transform, and I will um, talk about that later, so don't uh, worry about not understanding directly what I mean by that. The concept of de destitution seeks to transform the quality of time, to dismiss or break the historical continuum, or what we could call the march of history towards progress. I would like to start by um, explaining one concept that is the revolutionary tradition. Um, revolutionary tradition is not the past in itself, it is, um, but what from the past remains in our hands um, while irreducible to the present, which means that revolutionary tradition as a concept is not the past nor the present. It is a collection of specific experiences kept alive from the oppressed past by specific groups. It is a truth of oppressed people that lies in their past, but that don't exist in history. So for instance, um, ge genealogy, from what I uh, understood from your article, could well enter this because you look at the past and reanalyze it, the past from the truth of women to find this truth. And basically, revolutionary tr tradition is about the truth of the oppressed. In Chiapas, um, Struggles of pueblos originarios, um, for instance, or communal, communal forms of organization, pre-existing colonization, this uh, could be well part of what we could call a revolutionary tradition that uh, later will lead to the insurrection of the Zapatistas. In Rojava, the Kurdish struggle is one um, element of this tradition. But moreover, because of Oshalan's work, theoretical work, um, Bukshin municipalist history, meaning that Bukshin was seeing communes before the advent of communism as a concept, um, women liberation, anti-colonial struggles, all this enters uh, the revolutionary tradition of, the, of Rojava because of theoretical work by Oshalan. So, um, there is, therefore, a shock, uh, like mm, revolutionary aspiration, a revolutionary aspiration is for us the result between, uh, of a shock between this revolutionary tradition and the necessity of its organization. So basically, in Chiapas, you have the truth of the oppressed people 
because of their cultures and a lot of um, other things, but cultural oppression. And at different moments in time, you had um, all the people encountering this oppressed past and organizing um, organizing um, insurrection or revolution, like the FL Fuerzas de Liberación Nacional tried to did uh, before becoming the EZLN. Um, okay. And what's in very interesting is that while um, this revolutionary aspiration takes place, the tradition that is something that in the common idea is uh, monolithic and cannot change is actually challenged and transformed. And this is the case of women in Chiapas, for instance, or women in the Kurdish struggle uh, way before the Rojava um, uh, insurrection or revolution. Zapatisma and, and Rojava also challenged the capitalist perception of time and its social function through what I would call interruptions. Communal administration and decision making in Juntos de, Juntos de Buen Gobierno, sorry for the accent, and Mares in Chiapas or in the councils of Rojava do not seek to increase productivity or bureaucratic efficiency. It seeks to uh, further the involvement of people in the community and to create a collective. Because, and to paraphrase a French writer, Eric Azan, from collective action emerges politics, not the other way around. In Genoa, I, wrote, I read in your article, for instance, this quote, slowing down the work to gain unexpected aspect of the human relationship. And this is exactly that. And Techmill also taking the time to criticize or to criticize and discuss that as a community. The idea of uh, revolution, therefore, there is different than the classic planning that we have in the Western world and 20th century dogmas, especially after the Russian Revolution. Uh, there is no plan or precise idea of a revolutionary future. Do, there's no claim to be a model, and that's what Tanya emphasized. Um, Preguntando caminamos means asking we walk. The slogan of the Zapatistas is exactly that, with, with the attempt to bring justice now, not in the future <coughs> after the revolution, but now through communalization, coming as a community. Therefore, we do not measure the action of the insurrection of the Zapatistas on what will follow, but on the inherent justice that is within their action. And that's why uh, the one of the first things that Marcos said after the insurrection of Zapatistas is that they wanted to do a lesson in dignity to Mexico. Uh, therefore, in uh, Chiapas and Rojava, there, there is a tendency to eliminate the distance between theory and, praxi and praxis, something that in Europe is, uh, has a lot of place in the political landscape uh, of the left. The absence of division between theory and praxis is crucial, it's very important, because revolutionary organization uh, that would be the mediation between theory and praxis would only create a new domination. Destitution tried to escape, uh, escapes conception of political action as organization or ruling of life, and traps in, and I will explain later, a subject to subject, uh, subject to object relationship. We use the concept of usage, uh, which means that there is no exteriority of the object to the subject. So, for instance, there is no revolutionary subject prior the revolution. There is no insurrectionary subject before the revolution. Um, the moment of revolt, the moment of insurrection, is the moment of the perception of self as part of the collective. Territory or people are often portrayed as the subject of the insurrection or the subject of the revolution. We do the revolution because there's a territory like the Lacandon Forest in Chiapas. And, uh, or the, the, we, we do a revolution because they're Kurdistan and we seek to have a territory for Kurdistan. That's the way uh, media portray insurrections and revolutions. But that's not the case in Chiapas and Rojava. As I would argue, you can say the contrary, it's no, no bother. Um, territories are part of the collectivity forming an environment, as uh, Nikos Ioannou said earlier today. Uh, he called that an environment. I would call it a world. Um, so territories each, and people are generated during the fight, during the struggle, because the territory that is post-insurrection is completely different from what was before. And basically, in Chiapas, for instance, the Juntos de Bien Gobierno, the Mares, are, uh, come with the insurrection after, of course, the governmental uh, discussion that I will also talk about. Um, so destitution is not another world, creating another world aside of uh, this one. It's a new usage of the world. We inhabit the territory as much as we are inhabited by the territory. 
there is a reciprocal relation, and in Genoa, that's also uh, something I uh, picked up. Uh, maybe I'm wrong, so you can uh, tell the contrary. So from a destitution perspective, we do not fight for communism. Communism is lived within the fight itself as a new usage of the world. Ines Morales, you talk about uh, um, contradictions. And as I thought this was very interesting, because um, and so I rewrote this part of the presentation with us, because Rojava and Chiapas are full of contradictions. And that's something people criticize first, uh, especially among leftists. Um, there's a contradiction, for instance, between the will to dismiss power through communal organization and the persistence of some verticality. Uh, representative systems in Rojava, political parties, uh, a chain of commands. Um, in Chiapas, the persistence of the vertical um, organization. I, I don't know if people are very aware of how it, it works structurally, so maybe I'll do a parenthesis on that. Uh, okay, so in Chiapas, you have basically, uh, grossly, communities. After that, um, Mares, uh, municipios, and the Juntos de Buen Gobierno as a vertical structure, but full of representation and uh, communes and stuff like that. Uh, in, in Rojava, you have uh, the district, um, the, so communes, neighborhood levels, village levels, which are <coughs> the same, but neighborhood is for cities, the district levels, with, which is the city and the surroundings, and after the cantons, and you have three cantons in Rojava. All right, so end of the parenthesis. Um, there is, so there is a possibility for hidden power relations, uh, which could take over the system. Revolutionary power needs, therefore, to be dismissed, it's to dismiss itself while attacking the enemy. The answer of Rojava and Chiapas is the poli what, um, I, I forgot the name, but, uh, and I couldn't pronounce it, even if I remembered. Uh, it's politicized, you can find that on the article it's uh, cited. Politicization of the social sphere and socialization of politics. Socialization of politics is the communal administration with the communities that talk together to make decisions. And politicization of the social is something very interesting also. Uh, for instance, in the economic sphere, um, you have cooperatives, so people share the work, make decisions together, and um, share the, work, the, the wealth of created by this work. Of course, I'm not saying that this is the economy in Chiapas and the economy in Rojava. Especially in Rojava, it's a fraction of the economy of war of this region. Uh, but still, it's uh, const another construction of economic production. Um, also, in the there is a communal management of health in both Chiapas and Rojava, especially in Chiapas, if I remember correctly, uh, with health committees uh, dealing with health and discussing of the best way to uh, bring health services. Therefore, there is no, uh, again, there is no the objective is not to increase productivity or the efficiency of the social services as the market would claim to do. No, it's bring the community into the social services and break what we have in Europe, the distance between the institution, social institutions, and the people. A distance that was created, that, didn't, that was not like this. Um, political structures of autonomous territories are, could I would um, say that those structures, sorry, I would say that the political structures of autonomous territories are cracks uh, in the usage of the world. So the word cracks was used by someone called Holloway, and um, a, a cracks will mean like just uh, like a flower through the, 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 on the road, you know. Um, and that communes are cracks in those political structures. Um, the doing of the community is opposed to the social synthesis of the globalized metropolis as uh, criticized by the Zapatistas, and Tanya remember, uh, remembered us of that, but, but also of the very vertical political structure that emerged after the insurrection and that was felt as needed by the people that led the insurrection. Um, so what counts is not the measure, the value, or the production. What counts is the encounter, encounter between people and the time we take to make it worse, to create a collective. Um, and I think this is very important and it's something that is completely dismissed by the most of anarchists and leftists that criticize Rojava and Zapatista just by, because they see some kind of state. It's, it's just crazy. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> all right. So <coughs> conclusion. Yeah, I, I just bring me to, to the conclusion. So our, our task now, and this links to the end of uh, Tanya's presentation and to also uh, the end of your presentation, I think. Um, our task is to recompose the lost fragments of our different 
revolutionary traditions. My, my revolutionary tra tradition as French or Britain, for instance, would not be similar to the one of Chiapas. And the one on Chiapas is not, is not similar to the one in Rojava. So that means we, we can't uh, take one fragment, make it a model, and impose it everywhere else, like we try to do after the Russian Revolution. This doesn't work. And we need to recompose those fragments and after create a dialogue with them, not try to impose one above the others. Against the metropolis and its globalized homogeneity, we need to create un mundo donde quepan muchos mundos, a world that contains many worlds, in the words of the Zapatistas, and break the isolation of those fragments, and that was the international call of Tanya, break the isolation of the Zapatista, but also of the Rojava, because with the war, there will be increased isolation. Rojava is a fragment that might disappear because of war, defeat, or because of the persistence of power relation. That's totally possible. But I would like to, um, I wrote this article on using a lot a book that is called There is no unhappy revolution from Marcelo Tari. Um, and he says something. If there are unhappy rev revolutionaries, as we are now that Turkey is uh, attacking Rojava, and that most probably will win, or even if Rojava wins, the alliance with the Syrian um, government will bring something completely different from what they wanted in the first place. If there are unhappy revolutionaries like us, there is no unhappy revolution. Thank you very much. don't want to use the term Rojava because it's a Kurdish term that has a kind of geographical territorial reference designation and they do understand their own uh, federal democracy as something that is beyond geographical or national or ethnic identification so they prefer to call it uh, uh, federal democracy of Syria okay so I don't know how much, how correct is that, but I say that because many left uh, alternative news sources and media use this term continuously, which is not what the people themselves want to be called. Okay. And thank you for your presentation. Questions? First, the presentations were very good indeed. But I, like many of you in this room, <clears throat> am a student of what happened in Spain in 1936 to 1939. And a fundamental reason why the fascist won in Spain is because international solidarity was weak, very weak. So my question to all of us, including the panelists, is why the international solidarity for the Zapatistas and for Rojava has been so weak, starting from people in this room why it has been so weak. Both these revolutions, as I said at the beginning of this conference, are going to be destroyed. And it has taken a war against Rojava in order to get more people out in the streets than before the war. So let us analyze. It's very important for this conference to analyze what is wrong in the capacity of organizing effective solidarity movements as had been organized against the war in Vietnam, 
as had been organized against the war in Afghanistan. It's not at that level. Why not? Thank you. Probably first to answer the question and then to move on. Okay. Um, um, so about Rojava, uh, okay, it's uh, northern East East Syria because after the fascist um, Turkey government occupied one year or so more. Um, Afrin, so we cannot speak about northern, but only northern east. And uh, even speak about, uh, the, for example, in the newspaper or when journalists speak of, are speaking about uh, the situation, they say as Kurdish, because Kurd, uh, Kurdish people are uh, asking for state, so are really they are really. Um, not, uh, they don't know the situation, they don't know uh, which ideology, which kind of society they were building. And about the last question, I think I can speak about uh, the, how we, the, for example, organized the, in Italy the um, populationist or left and the anarchist uh, movement and groups are uh, in solidarity. They are the making action. For example, just uh, in the morning, they stop uh, in uh, Pisa. They stop one fly to Istanbul because they were protesting in uh, the check-in of Turkish airline. And in Italy, but even in Germany, and they are making like action like this, but I know that this, this is not uh, a <coughs> analysis. I know. And I think that we need time to make this analysis together. I don't know if now it's, uh, the, we have time and even uh, maybe we are tired, but we have to understand this. I think it's, uh, me too, I think it's really very important because uh, now uh, civilians are killing, and uh, Daesh now is uh, again, they are again free, so jihadists are really in all uh, North Rojava for women. Uh, sorry, they are really now in a bad situation, in a, the worst situation that we can imagine. And for, as me, as a woman, I, I can ask, we have to do something. And we can do even something like at the end of the of the conference, we can do something, ask uh, in for the movement in Athen or uh, stop a street and make a flyer to get information, to get uh, some information to the people because uh, they need uh, we need uh, to share what we know about the situation. Okay, thank you very much for your question. Uh, it's actually something that is very interesting. And uh, at first I wanted to write my article on the, the similarities between the Spanish Revolution and what's happening there, so I will answer that. But first, just a parenthesis, as I used Rojava, I also used uh, Pueblos Originarios, and I only used it because Tania was before me. I was going to use indigenous, and I just changed it because of that. You know, it's just like uh, representation that we have, words that we have, and we use them, and they might be wrong, and that's the thing. Uh, so it's, it's, it's good to, to comment on that, to be honest. Uh, all right, so yeah, uh, on the Spanish Revolution, um, yeah, it's true that international solidarity was weak and it was a problem, but uh, the question of um, the, 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 the Spanish Revolution and its defeat is like, it's way more complicated than the only absence of solidarity um, internationally. Um, in Spain, you had a very po like a real political problem, and I think anarchists in Barcelona made a, a huge mistake by associating when they were the most powerful during the first days of the revolution with the um, republicans in the, in the what we call the anti-fascist front, uh, which uh, later proved to be uh, just a trap, um, and republicans will later kill anarchists and execute some of the political uh, activists. Um, even the even the anarchists that joined the government killed some of their brothers because of that. So it's way more complicated than only solidar international solidarity. But um, it's so if you want more 
on that, I think like the book Barricades in Barcelona of Augustin Guillermo is a masterpiece of that. He goes almost day by day of the 1936, 1937. It's very interesting. Uh, I would recommend it. Uh, all right. Uh, in terms of international solidarity, you, you say we are waiting, we have to wait for war to, to see protests and stuff. I think we should not mistake this for international solidarity. And this is just protest. Protests, we have them for years and years and years, and it doesn't change anything. Um, it's, I think it's more like social conscience, we could say that. It's something that you will tweet about, Facebook about, but it's not something that you will. International solidarity is not about that. Um, and in Chiapas, I, I wouldn't say for Rojava, um, but for Federation. Um, in Chiapas, international solidarity is incremental for the organization, and uh, especially for the techni technical construction uh, of, for instance, water projects and stuff like that. It's very important that to have international solidarity, and uh, it brings a lot. So when you say there's no international solidarity, it's not true. It's just like. So the, it, it doesn't. Uh, no, yeah, sorry. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm putting words in your mouth. I'm sorry. Um, yeah, it's not enough. It's true, but it's still uh, very important. I think in Chiapas, for instance, is very important. Uh, yeah. So. More questions? Sorry. <coughs> Uh, since the call is for all of us to find ways to organize better in our communities in the context we, we live in, I would like to ask Fabiana if she can share more information around the Women's Academy and how the processes of the Kurdish women run internally. So you mentioned something about their assemblies and that they have like different types of facilitators and so on. So I would like to know a bit more about these particularities in the way they are organizing internally. Yes, um, you refer about uh, women. Huh? Um, and it's even the context that uh, I know better because uh, I, I am a woman and uh, Woman in Kurdish in the Kurdish movement, they work uh, two times because they work uh, in the mixed uh, <coughs> assembly, but they work even alone as uh, only female assembly, and uh, um, so each kind of uh, it means that each kind of uh, organization, cooperatives, uh, uh, healthcare, or other there are always uh, um, assembly only of women and the mixed one. Uh, about the academy, it's uh, uh, something that is uh, uh, really very uh, close to um, learn and share knowledge, most of all. Um, so they uh, they make a lot of uh, meeting with different topic and uh, um, they uh, make assembly like uh, the meeting it's not like our uh, we are like this sort of situation because we are not uh, really I am not among you but uh, we are in front and uh, up and so on uh, so they create uh, an environment, uh, really different physical environment. You can feel and you can uh, face each other all, not only me, I can face all, but you cannot see yeah, and so on. Um, and uh, about the organization, I think that the Tikmil is one of the most uh, particular assembly, kind of assembly, because uh, when you uh, organize uh, a group, just more than one, you are a group, you make the meal. So uh, it's uh, really uh, um, an instrument, a tool for revolution, because with the take meal and with the assembly, you can change yourself, your mindset. And first of all, for the woman, is uh, to change our mind. After we can change the man, but uh, we have to 
um, know really our history very well. So uh, Academy is uh, genealogy, Academy is uh, the organization of economy. All is inside uh, a building and even uh, a person as an individual, you uh, participate uh, to all. This is what the Kurdish movement asks, the women's Kurdish movement, because uh, the democratization of society is this. You participate, you are voice, and so they, and, uh, and just uh, one thing, because it's important to understand that the implementation in uh, northern Syria of democratic uh, confederalism um, has the experience of uh, the past years in Turkey, south in Bakur, where, Democrat, uh, where Kurdish were um, organized the um, municipality big municipality, like uh, the Arbakir, Ahmed, the name is Ahmed, um, a very big city, it was uh, uh, self-governed, it was organized as like uh, uh, democratic confederalism, so there were two co-chairs, two, uh, one male, one female, and uh, it's one, I think it's uh, very important, I think that uh, the only woman a woman can be um, elected or nominated or called only by woman. So, not a, a mix, the, from the mixed uh, uh, assembly cannot uh, um, nominate or called, uh, I don't know, sorry, a woman. Because uh, men bring competition. We have to uh, stop some negative um, mindset, really, it seems that it's natural. No, it's not natural. Uh, we have to change our mindset and the other. I don't know. <laughs> Thank you. Just a part of this, yes. Uh, sorry, sorry. Um, I'm sorry, maybe I was a bit too harsh. Uh, I don't know, uh, I, I was stressed, so I, maybe I was too harsh. I, I, would, I don't want the, the idea of not having enough uh, uh, solidarity uh, is being wrong. So just um, and I there's this that popped uh, in my head, and I think it's also linked to how we can organize in communities. Like maybe um, the the problem is that we don't understand uh, their tra their revolutionary tradition because it's not ours. And as you say, it's like creating a global network confederation. Maybe it would start by finding our own fragments and and therefore linking all fragments to them because we have a truth also in our pro oppressed past and maybe instead of looking at, uh, looking at them and say we support them and maybe we, also, we should do that but also at the same time try to find in our environment the truth that would lead to our fragments. And in France, for instance, I think the yellow vest is kind of a good um, example of this. So three more questions, two over here and one over there. Who wants to start first? Yeah. Okay. Uh, yes, Le 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 was uh, referring to uh, a Russian revolution uh, as a problematic example, but, uh, but isn't it uh, more that the history, the mainstream history of Russian revolution is, is problematic? For example, but, uh, Mary Bookchin is writing about the history of the Russian Revolution in his work, The Third Revolution. It's, it's quite different. And, and then, then it's uh, uh, that history of Russian Revolution, it's, it's quite uh, near the history of, of Spanish uh, Revolution or, or this uh, Rojavan and uh, Zapatista Revolution. And, and uh, in that perspective, this uh, Leninist uh, uh, October Revolution was mo more like a coup d'etat and not a revolution. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, so I, I believe it is a, as it is disorienting to condemn the whole tree because of some bad fruit. I believe it is the same in the same way in disorienting. Uh, if we, we idealize or sanctify the whole tree because of some good fruit. So you, you dismissed quite uh, 
uh, instantly the criticism of people towards uh, Rojava and I want to uh, push you a little towards that uh, side uh, because the analysis has to understand whether we are speaking of one concrete thing or which is probably the case, about a complex system with uh, different stakeholders. So I, my question would be, to what degree do you believe that the decisions made uh, in the last five years are commonly uh, supported and actually were made commonly, let's say, bottom-up, okay? Uh, and to, on, to what degree they have been supported silently or passionately by the people there during these five years uh, because they were decisions that uh, really define the future of uh, these regions and um, not only having to do with the alliances that they made but also with uh, the decision to extend their uh, claims, their uh, occupation also in vast areas that are not Kurdish areas. Okay, and uh, first was is this, and the second is, to your knowledge, to what degree are there conflicts within the establishment of the Kurdish people, and also to what degree there are conflicts between the, let's say, under Kurdish occupation Arab populations on the southern part of eastern Syria. Thank you. First on the Russian Revolution, I totally agree with you in, uh, in everything that you said, and I would put uh, the Russian Revolution as one of the moments in history where um, some revolutionary tradition were uh, buried. So, for instance, the Maktab China in Ukraine, or um, many other like the Peasants' uh, Rebellion also uh, in Russia. Um, so, yeah, of course, the Russian Revolution is not like. Uh, what I, I would not put that in what I called uh, tra revolutionary tradition or tradition of the oppressed. Um, all right. Um, yeah, it's a very good question. And it, in my article, I didn't have the space to uh, really emphasize this part, but I criticized the, um, the, the, the power relations and I tried to put a bit of this in my presentation, but it would have been too long to really um, have you on that. So, um, all right, so it's, it is a very complex system. So for instance, as uh, Tanya said about uh, the Zapatista territory, Zapatista's territory is not a territory um, freed from the gov Mexican government. You have an overlap, uh, they overlap, and basically you can have one government school and one Zapatista school next to each other. Um, and it is very, important because, for instance, um, and that's what led to the creation of the vertical structure of um, Puntos de Bien Gobierno and the Mares, is that in the, in the 90s, after the governmental, uh, government Zapatista talk about um, new reform, about uh, including uh, cult um, indigenous cultures within the constitution and stuff, um, where, what, what, did, what the, the Mexican government did was to, at the same time, lead a huge uh, development policy to, to bring the people that were supporting the Zapatistas in the, under the, the government's umbrella um, through money, through <coughs> development schemes, and stuff like that. So, and it happened, uh, it, it, this happens a lot in, uh, in, in uh, this region. Um, so it's very complex, and in Rojava it's the same. Uh, in, uh, Relatively, um, for instance, I, I don't, re I don't remember um, which uh, in which city it is. I, I think it's maybe in Camislo. Is the, the airport of the city was run by the, by the regime, the Syrian regime, for instance. So there is also an overlap. And what we tend to forget is that the Kurd Kurdish or Confederalist uh, revolution was uh, permitted in a way by the regime that was drawn through to go fight on other fronts against uh, ISIL and the Syrian rebellion. So it's very complex and uh, my paper is not about having a clear view about that. I try to be as clear as possible now, but uh, there's a lot of information there. Um, about conflicts within the, the establishment, within the establishment I'm not sure, but there are there, there's no one political party in Rojava. There are a lot of other Kurdish political parties that disagree with the PYD and the establishment, as you called it. And so 
um, for instance, Human Rights Watch, um, and I forgot the other one. Uh, Human Rights Watch wrote a report about possible abuse from uh, the Asais, the, what we could call the, the police of the, the, the communes, of the councils, um, and by the, 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 the military of abuse to, to, towards other uh, members of political parties of opposition to the Kurdish, um, uh, to the PYD. So th there is this also to take into account. It's very complex politically, and I, I can't pretend to really explain that right now. But uh, yeah, it's a reality, so it's a very good question. So I, I, I want to only ask this uh, about um, what you call occupation of Kurdish. Um, yes. In the northern, the Syria, northern Syria, but uh, even Middle East is uh, not homogenic. Yep. So you you can cross uh, in a few kilometers, uh, and you meet uh, Yazidi who are speaking Kurdish, Kurmanji, I mean, uh, you meet uh, Muslim Arab uh, speaking Arabic and with culture, their own culture, Kurdish who are most of all assimilated, mostly. So they speak uh, very good Arabic, maybe if uh, they are Syrian, uh, they were born in, what we say, Rojava in this case, because I'm uh, referring to Kurdish, and they say Rojava, Rojla, Bakur, Bashur, as they say North, South, East, West. So. And uh, you can meet Turkman, Assyrian, and so on. So it's for this reason that in the preamble of the social contracts they say all one people of this north and east Syria because before it was north with Afrin, Kobane, and Jazeera. Now is Kobane was Kobane and Jazeera because Afrin is uh, occupied by jihadists and Turkish state. They change the population. Maybe you don't know that uh, Afrin was one of the most um, developed in uh, uh, social uh, democratization of society. It means that women were outside, come outside, they were speaking, they were organizing themselves, and obviously even men. And uh, for example, they give uh, lesson and the school in the, at the school uh, in each languages, not only Kurdish or Kurmanji. So I, I cannot consider occupation this this uh, uh, sort of organization. How people want to organize themselves, and I think that uh, when people try to organize themselves in uh, uh, with the central government, uh, you will find a state or even a party less, uh, or anyway, a state who will uh, struggle and who will uh, want to destroy your work. So what is happening now in uh, northern Syria is what you can help to us happen to us if we uh, organize themselves ourselves. Oh. We, we, are, we can live because we don't organize. We can write and talk, but we don't organize ourselves. If we organize, you will check. And this is why I think that we have to support, not only because of the, they are dying with our arms, with our bomb. We are selling to Turkey bombs, and we are giving as Europe money, because of the refugees, and th in this part uh, that you, with the red and orange, uh, there were people living almost uh, with problems, uh, obviously, but they were organizing themselves. Now, they have to change place because we don't, they, they, Turkey say, okay, I will put the refugees. This is not their land. And uh, how can they live in the place where to be there, you have to bomb? For me, I cannot imagine it. It's really a, a very 
was situation, a very bad situation for them. They will change the population. So occupation, I, I don't like this word when uh, we speak about uh, a population. Mm, sorry, I finished. Close. Okay. Thank you, Fabiano. We had uh, one question from before. Is another question? Um, probably, uh, if it's short, yes. Yeah, because it was also before me. Okay, this question was Tatiana was next. Where? Put your hand up, who is it? You have a question? <laughs> Tatiana. Tanya. Still Tanya. Um, well, thanks a lot, firstly, and uh, I cannot point out, stress out enough, the, the effect of the collectivity. Um, like, as part of a political organization, or to, to or how you put it, um, to socialize our political sphere, something like that. And uh, I want to stress out that um, also in, in as in, in the in the Zapatista context, they they rise or the what they do, it's based on their tradition because they have been organizing in this way for a long, long, long time. And also here in Europe we have been organizing in this way a long time ago. And capitalism has affected us so much longer than for example than for example in the in Pueblos Originarios in, in Chiapas or in in the in the Kurdish movement, and they still have uh, something to protect because they're not so infected yet by capitalism. Whereas we here in the West are so much infected, so I think we cannot learn enough from 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 these people. Plus, I find this concept of tech meal and academia um, so striking. To, to to liberate actually our minds from, from the system. And this only can happen in collectivity. To learn, relearn collectivity, to, to get from the I, because our society is so much based on individual individuals, not but not collect collectives. And we have to get from the I to the we. Mm -hmm. And um, and to answer one question of why is there not enough um, international solidarity, in case of the Zapatistas, the, Zap the Zapatistas have said, and I think this has been misunderstood, they have said solidarity for us, what you can do to be more, to be solidary is to fight where you are. Mm. And this has actually led to kind of um, forgetting about the Zapatistas. How about the Zapatistas say we have to fight where we are? Of course we have to fight where we are. This doesn't mean A, we copy what the Zapatistas do, and B, to forget about them. And also in movements before, like in the 80s, 70s, 80s, there was always a call to people in Europe, you have to fight where you are. To, to, and if you don't, we won't win our struggles. And I think before they have been more clear, like stop, stop um, ex ex the exportation of weapons, for example. Mm. There has been so much more action on, you know, making this war stop in, in, in blocking the exportation of weapons. And this is part of solidarity as well. And, and I would call for a new internationalism and, and also on Sunday we will hear about it in a, on a keynote speaker. So I think this is what, what is needed to fight here, but with also with the perspective on other regions and to, to reconnect ourselves, to, to create a collective here and a bigger collective like globally. Okay, this was the last question because we are running late. Sorry for all the others. We, you can continue the break. Uh, after the answers, we'll have a short 10 minute break. And after the